Hey everybody, Steve here and I'm in the Illinois Recording Studio. Okay, so it's story time today. So, I think all of us know, if we go back and think about things, we all have kits that we miss from the past. And uh, I've gone down that path so many times, it's not even funny thinking about kits that I owned and ones that I wish I had again and wondering which one of those would mean the most to me if I were able to get it back again or get something close to it back again. So, uh, what you see before you is an example of that for me. And uh, this is a little bit beyond the norm of what you normally see me set up with, which is usually a four-piece kit. But at one point in time, I did have a scenario that was very much like this. And I was using this kit when I was gigging. This has got to be, oh man, how old was I? I don't know, maybe 19. And I was gigging uh, in a place in a, at a resort on the East Coast with a, uh, a great band that was actually just a great uh, jazz trio. A great pianist, his name was Charles Pizer, Charlie Pizer, P-I-Z-E-R. The guy was an unbelievable composer, an unbelievable pianist, and I was very honored to be able to work with him. Dime, he was about, probably 10 years older than me, so he's probably 29. The bass player in that band was a guy by the name of Larry Epstein, who was a phenomenal, phenomenal electric bassist, and at the end of that summer gig, he ended up going to audition and became assistant principal of the San Francisco Symphony. And if you fast forward and, uh, some decades later, there was actually a point at which our youngest son, Christopher, who was playing acoustic bass at the time, actually had a coaching session with him at a bass camp in California. When uh, my wife said, yeah, Chris had a coaching uh, with uh, Larry Epstein, they said, Larry Epstein? And it turned out to be the guy that I played gigs with in, uh, on, at the resort back in 1970, I don't know when this was, two, 72. So anyway, on that gig, I had uh, a configuration of this kit. And most of you got to be thinking on a, a trio gig, what were you thinking? Well, number one, I was young, so I'd carry anything anywhere. Didn't matter how much gear it was. Number two, it was a great sounding kit. And uh, despite the fact that it was larger than most sizes you'd play in a small trio, it sounded good. And uh, if you keep in mind, uh, Louis Belson, when we played with the Oscar Peterson trio, was playing his normal double bass drum kit and everything else, and he managed to do just a great job with the trio. But anyhow, you start wondering about, wish I could get a kit back, wish I could get a kit back, and I always missed this one. I didn't realize how much I missed it until I found this particular kit. I was looking around, always looking around, remembering the chrome overwood slingerling kit that I had. I had that kit, when I had that kit, it was two 22-inch bass drums, 14 by 22s, a 9 by 13 rack tom, 16 by 16 floor, 16 by 18 floor, and I had bought a 12 by 15 and 14 by 16 concert tom, single-headed concert toms. On that gig that I played at the resort, I used all of that kit except for the second bass drum uh, because you just couldn't fit it on the stage. So, sold that kit. After that gig was up, we were going to go on the road with a different band, and this kit was too much, so I sold it and got a different kit to take on the road. But I've always missed it. So, lo and behold, about three weeks ago, I spot a kit for sale, and I look at it and I go, man, it looks dead mint. And the trouble with some of this, this is actually chrome wrap. It's metal over wood. Slingerland in the 70s made a finish that was chrome over wood and copper over wood. I'm a big fan of both of those, and I have a copper kit that I love to death as well. But this is a, uh, the same exact thing that I used on a gig that was really meaningful to me. So usually these finishes are all dinged up, bad shape, etc. But I spot this kit, and this kit was a little different than the one I had. This kit was, and you, you can sort of get a feel for it, there's one drum that came with this kit that's not here. So it was 8x12, 9x13, 10x14, 12x15, 16x16, 16x18, two 22s, and the chrome overwood snare drum as well. So I buy the whole kit, it shows up and it is absolutely in fantastic original condition. I change the heads out for my preferred Remo coated ambassadors and clear Remo ambassador bottoms. And I set it up the way my kit was configured. And I put the 10 by 14 and the 12 by 15 over here because it reminds me of the 12 by 15, 14 by 16 I had. So close enough. It doesn't have to be the exact kit. It doesn't have to be the total complete exact kit you played or a replica of it, but this is so close it's not even funny. And it brings back very fond memories. This one happens to be a three ply series, which was maple poplar maple with a more rounded bearing edge. Uh, Slingerland went to a five ply all maple with no reinforcement rings and a sharper edge, but that was in the late 70s. So, for me, this kit brings back fond memories. Um, I loved 
the, it reminds me so much of a time in my life when I had great fun playing on a gig with an absolutely incredible, incredible group of musicians. Small group, but wonderful musicians. It was a lot of fun. And uh, sitting behind this kit brings me back to uh, my youth. So I'm going to do a little playing on this kit. And uh, again, you know, I don't usually play a big kit like this. I love double bass, but I don't play it that much anymore. So you got to forgive me if it's a little bit less than perfect here, but it'll be for fun. So I hope you enjoy it. Now let me get this microphone off and we'll have at it. <laughs> 